As somebody who prides himself on trying to keep only the tools that I use on a regular basis, I was kind of surprised when I started pulling out my saws and discovering just how many saws I actually have. I only consider a few of these saws essential for woodworking. The rest of them I use on an occasional basis and for things other than woodworking. There's a couple of these that I could probably live without. And by the way, if you're interested in getting started in woodworking, you certainly don't need all of these saws. In fact, I have a list you can download for free over at mytoolist.com showing you how you can get all of the tools you need to start woodworking for under a thousand dollars. So anyways, I just thought this would be kind of fun to show you all of these saws and tell you what I use them for or don't use them for. And because I know some of you are going to ask, no, I didn't get any of these at SawCon. Starting over here, I've got my stack of hole saws. These things all fit onto this unit here, which goes into a drill like that for whenever you need a perfectly round hole, which can be hard to cut with say a jigsaw or something like that. This is the largest one I have, but you can get these in much larger sizes too. If you're using a hole saw, just take it slowly. Don't go at full speed, it won't cut very well. You might be surprised to know that I have a slew of hand saws. I have this coping saw, which is for making very tight turns and cuts, usually on thin pieces of wood. I used it recently to show how to make a coping cut on baseboards. A coping saw uses these really thin blades so you can make tight turns, kind of like a scroll saw. You can put it to where the the teeth cut on the push or the pull, whichever you prefer. This is just a cheap Stanley one I picked up at the hardware store a number of years ago. I don't remember why exactly I needed it, but I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't have an actual reason. Then there's this saw that I bought because I thought I needed it. This is a Stanley dovetail saw because when I first got into woodworking, like a lot of woodworkers, you kind of think that you need to learn how to hand cut dovetails. So I did it a couple of of times using this saw and I didn't really particularly enjoy the process and I don't really see a need for it so I haven't used it since for cutting dovetails. Occasionally I've cut other things with this but this is one of my least used saws. In its original packaging is this Japanese flush trim saw. This one was given to me by Lainey Shaughnessy years ago and I use it for mostly cutting off dowels to make them flush with the surface of a project. Before I had this, I would just use a hacksaw blade to cut those off. The reason why you can use it flush with the surface is because it's got this flexible blade and that the teeth on it don't extend side to side. So they're completely in line with the saw so it won't mar the surface that you're on. It cuts on the pull and out of all of my hand saws, this is the one I use the most. At some point, you're probably gonna need a hacksaw for cutting metal. This is, again, kind of an inexpensive Stanley hacksaw that I picked up at the hardware store. I use it pretty frequently, and probably mostly in woodworking, I use it for cutting bolts to a shorter length because I don't have the right size. And I've got this little bitty version of it too. I think I might've had this before my flush trim saw because I could use it to this way to flush trim dowels. I probably only paid a couple dollars for that thing. I've got one of these kind of hand saws. I don't, I'm not really sure what it's called. I guess it's just like a crosscut saw. Once in a while I use it if I need to say, just cut a dowel in half or a small piece of wood and I don't really want to bother with getting out my miter saw or whatever. This is called a box saw and it's used for cutting miters or crosscuts using uh, kind of a jig like this. Usually it comes with this. I know this one did. So, you know, you can slide it in here and you can cut 45 degree uh, miters or you can cross cut pieces like this. The board just sets right down in there. I use this hardly ever. Probably one of those saws I could do without. Nothing to do with woodworking. This is a drywall saw, but if you're doing any work in the house or you need to cut out some drywall to install an outlet, this is the tool to use. 
And that's all of my hand saws. Moving into the power tools, I wasn't sure if I should include this as a saw or not. This is just a Dremel, it's just a multi-tool, but it has saw attachments that you can put on it. This is good for a very specific job. Say you need to cut off the head of a bolt that's stuck into something and you can just cut it off like that. Another saw that has very little use in woodworking is a reciprocating saw, but this is a really handy saw to have because it'll cut through just about anything. I've used it to cut limbs off of trees. I, it'll cut through metal. It's mainly used for demolition. This is an old Ryobi reciprocating saw back when they were blue. The thing I don't like about this particular one is that you need a uh, Allen wrench to get it in there to loosen it to remove the blade and it's supposed to, I think it fits down into here for storage that's long gone so I always have to just like rummage through my Allen wrenches to find the one that fits that whenever I need to change the blade. I've got two circular saws. This is a rigid saw which is heavy and real sturdy and I've got this more inexpensive Ryobi saw. I bought this one when I was designing my weekend woodworker course and my thousand dollar tool list because I wanted to see if this is quality enough for me to recommend and it is, it works out fine. I don't think it's as powerful as the rigid saw and the base is a little bit flimsier, but for most jobs around the shop, the, or the Ryobi works out just fine. This is my DeWalt jigsaw. I consider a jigsaw to be an essential woodworking tool. They're relatively inexpensive. You'll probably mostly use a jigsaw for cutting curves. I haven't had a bandsaw in almost a year now and I'm thinking about getting another one but honestly I can get by with my jigsaw for most of the woodworking I do just fine. And of course this is my table saw. You've seen me use this for almost 10 years now. This was given to me by a group of woodworkers back in 2012. It was kind of a surprise gift because I was using this old craftsman table saw and they thought it would be really nice to get me this and it's just a really special saw for me to have. There's a plaque up there on the wall that uh, has a list of all the people who donated to make this possible. It was all a bunch of people rounded up on Google Plus. Once in a while people ask me what saw this is, they want to get one like it, and they don't make this anymore. This is a Porter Cable table saw. It was my understanding that there was a Hitachi version that was very similar to this. It's pretty much a bare bones table saw, it works great. The one thing I would shy away from is those super low end table saws. I remember testing out a Ryobi table saw that was just utter crap. The thing was noisy, it was scary, you couldn't get a, a straight cut on it. It felt like, it basically it felt like a circular saw turned upside down with an aluminum table. And this is my Ryobi miter saw. This is a 10 inch miter saw. I consider a miter saw an essential woodworking tool. I also have a 12 inch Porter cable saw. You might remember me using that. That's also up in my storage unit. It works fine. It was just too big. And once I got this Ryobi, I found that it works just fine and takes up less space. I made this, this table for it so that I can have wood supported all the way through and I've got fences on here. This is part of my weekend workshop course. Also up in my storage unit, I have a scroll saw. That's an antique scroll saw that my dad bought in the 1950s. Those of you who have been watching my channel for a long time might remember I used to have it over here against the wall, but it was just taking up too much space for as often as I used it, which was maybe once or twice a year, it just didn't make sense. So I've got it up there. One of these days I'll try to decide what I want to do with it, if I want to keep it or not. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it was just kind of fun to just sort of flex on all of my saws. <laughs>